Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and we are back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex and this month I thought we would take a look at something I reviewed recently which is this super inexpensive Intel based mini PC from GMK Tech. You can pick these up for less than $150 and they have an Intel N100 processor inside which actually makes this a very good Plex server. So what I thought we would do in this video is install the Plex media server on this device and see how it performs doing kind of mid-level types of tasks like serving up multiple users and transcoding videos into different video formats on the fly and we'll see how well uh, you can get by with a very inexpensive server. Now before we jump into this I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure this is a paid sponsorship from Plex However, they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see how we can make this cheap server a media server. Now in this video, we're going to install the Windows version of the Plex media server onto this hardware, and that's because the Windows version is likely the one most people are going to use if you're just starting out, and of course this little mini PC comes with Windows pre-installed. There's one area though where you may want to consider starting with Linux, and that involves HDR tone mapping. Now, if you're not familiar with HDR tone mapping, it's where you take an HDR video, like something you may have ripped off of a Blu-ray MKV, and converting that to a standard dynamic range for displays like this one that don't support HDR. On the Linux side, these Intel chips can do that in hardware, but not on the Windows side. In Windows, you need an NVIDIA GPU to do hardware-based tone mapping. But if you are not doing any tone mapping, Windows is a good place to start, and all of the other hardware transcoding features will be enabled on here. Now, as I mentioned at the outset, this little mini PC has an Intel Alder Lake N100 processor on board. And the reason why I always recommend people use Intel processors on their Plex servers is that the Intel chips have a great feature called QuickSync, that allows them to very quickly decode and encode video from one format to another. And why that's important is because if you plan on using your Plex server when you're not at home, transferring large volumes of video through your internet connection to your smartphone may not work all that well given network conditions. But if you can compress the video down into something smaller, those videos would likely play back just fine. And one of the nice things about the Intel chips here is that they can work with a variety of different video formats on the fly to do that transcoding for you. And I've done a video about hardware transcoding where I go into much more detail. But what's nice about uh, the development of these Intel processors over the years is that they keep adding features to them. So this chip is an Intel Alder Lake processor. And as you can see here on this Wikipedia chart, which I'll link to in the video description, it has the ability to do a lot of video formats that Intel chips at this price point could not do just a few years ago. So you'll be able to get a lot of mileage out of this. Now, if you are not doing any kind of transcoding, you just want to take the videos and use this as a server in the home, this is not as important. But this little machine, I think, will still handle things quite effectively because not only is it good enough to do basic media serving. It also has 2.5 gigabit ethernet, so you shouldn't have any bandwidth problems either, provided you have your network set up the right way. So with all that out of the way, why don't we get the Plex media server installed on this PC? There is a download button up here on the top navigation that you'll want to click on, and then you'll want to go over here to Plex media server, and then make sure Windows is selected. And one thing to note is that you do not need to pay anything to serve media from your computer. You do need to pay for a Plex Pass to get that hardware transcoding that I just talked about. But if you're just doing in-home media serving, you don't need the Plex Pass and you can do quite a bit for free, which is why this is such a fun project. You can download it, see if it works, and if there are features in Plex Pass that you find of interest, you can then upgrade from there. So I'm going to go here and click on Windows and go to Choose Distribution. In almost every case, you want to download the 64-bit version. And what will happen here is the software will download into my Downloads directory. Now let's install it. All right, this is as simple as installing any other application on your PC. You'll double-click on the Install here. You will get uh, this notification asking for permission. You can grant that, provided you downloaded it from Plex directly. 
and we'll just go ahead here and follow the basic install procedure to get the server installed. After it installs, we do have to point it at our media directories, and after that, we'll be ready to serve some media. All right, after you finish the installation process, it will pull up your default browser to this screen where it's going to want you to create a Plex account or log into an existing one. Plex works best with an account that's set up, and I already have an account because I have a Plex Pass, so I'm gonna log into that. But if you don't yet have an account, you'll need to create one here. And that, of course, gets you access to all of the other free Plex features that we've covered in other videos that you can find in the video description. So let me log in here and we'll take it to the next step. All right, I have logged in and now it's getting my server initialized. And after this is ready to go, we can then start pointing it at media. And it looks like we are ready to go here. So I'm going to click on got it here. And I'm just going to give it the name that was assigned here because that will identify this server in my <laughs> growing list of servers that I have. And the first step here is to point it at media. Now on this computer, I just have some movies that I installed on it. And if I go over to my C drive here, I'll just show you where I put everything. I put everything in a folder here called movies. And I've got a bunch of Blu-ray rips and a few other demo files that I'm going to be looking at. And you could have external media attached to this. You can have other internal drives. Pretty much any disk that's accessible to the Windows operating system will also be accessible to Plex. And that's what makes this so easy here. So I'm gonna go ahead here and add a library and we're just gonna call this Movies. And I'm going to browse for the Movies folder on my C drive. And I'll just click on Add here. And I'll click Next and we'll click Done. And what will happen now is that uh, the media server that just installed itself onto this machine will start scanning the uh, movie folder that I just added. And so these movies will start coming in here with all of the metadata that Plex captures and makes available to users running their software. So we're going to let this thing chew on this for a minute, get everything set up, and when it's done, we will take a look and see how well this can handle transcoding and how to configure it. So let's jump into the gear icon here and just make sure that everything is set up to transcode properly. Now, if I go into my settings, you want to look for your server on the list of servers on the left-hand side of the screen. And you want to go over to Transcoder. And right now, I just have it in the basic setting, and it's got hardware acceleration enabled, which is good. If I click on Show Advanced, we can see a little bit more that we can configure here. I'm going to leave the HDR tone mapping on for now, but this might be problematic if I have an HDR movie that's being tone mapped down to a non-HDR display. And again, the Windows uh, server here doesn't perform that task in hardware, but it can do it with the same hardware on Linux. So you might see better performance on the Linux side with this checked on. And I'm also going to make sure that the hardware acceleration thing is checked here, but also the video encoding for hardware acceleration is also checked. And it looks like we are good to go here. So now we can start playing around with our server. And what's really neat is that if you go onto any other device that you have logged into your Plex account, you will now see that Plex server. So I can go in here and start playing back media from this server immediately here. Now what I'm playing back right now is a VP9 encoded film from Netflix. This is one of their Creative Commons videos that they make available for testing purposes. This is a 4K movie running at 60 frames per second encoded in VP9 format. And if we jump over to the dashboard on the little knuck box here, uh, you will see that right now I'm actually playing back two pieces of media, one a Blu-ray MKV file, but then here is the VP9 file. And what you'll see is that the server is currently transcoding the video from 4K VP9 to 4K H.264. And the server is doing this in hardware because this is one of the features of these newer Intel chips is that they can do hardware VP9 encoding and uh, decoding here, and it's doing just that. So we've got HW here indicating hardware transcoding is going on, and then, of course, the hardware there for the other side of the transaction going back out to the phone. Now, if I jump back out to our full screen here and scroll down, you can see that uh, we're not getting a huge load on 
complex here in processing this. So right now with that transcoding going on and the other film uh, currently playing without any transcoding, we've only using about 20% of the available processing power. There are some background tasks going on in this computer right now, maybe a Windows update that's consuming a little bit more. But as far as Plex is concerned, it is under 20% or just at 20% doing that live transcode and sending a video directly back for direct play. But now what I'm going to do is add a little bit more to the mix here. So as this is playing, I'm going to go over to my computer and force a transcode. So as you can see here right now, it's playing the original format, but I'm going to go here and uh, go to show all, and I'm going to force it to a lower bit rate 1080p. And of course, that will give it a bit of a delay as it starts to spin up that transcoding session here. Um, but what we will see happen is the movie soon will start playing back as it is right now. And if we jump back to our chart here, you can see that Plex is taking up a little bit more resources, but not all that much more. So we're looking at about 25% now, uh, whereas before it was hovering around 20 or so. So we're able to uh, keep up here pretty well and still have room for even more transcoding and even more media serving. Now, a little bit earlier, I threw five simultaneous hardware transcodes at this thing and it was able to keep up just fine. That includes the VP9 we had earlier, a 10-bit HEVC, and the rest were Blu-ray MKVs. You can see also that it was able to uh, have some room left to do a little bit more if we wanted to. So we were only using about 35% of the CPU capacity for that particular operation. But when I threw a 4K HDR Blu-ray MKV at it, that's where things went a little bit off the rails. Direct playing was fine without transcoding, but if I tried to transcode it, it was not able to do so in hardware and it had a very hard time delivering that media. That's because Windows doesn't support the HDR tone mapping. And you can see that the CPU has to take over here from the built-in transcoder that's built into that processor and that bogs things down significantly so much so that you won't get decent playback at least on the Windows side. I may come back and put Linux on this and see how that does for the HDR tone mapping but hopefully this video gives you an idea as to what your limitations are when you are hosting a server on low-end hardware in Windows like this but still for the price point, you really can't beat this. This is a very good Plex server that I think for most people will be more than adequate, especially if you're not doing all that much hardware transcoding. Uh, this will certainly deliver the goods without issue. One thing I do recommend you do on occasion is pop down into your taskbar and check for updates. Keep that server up to date as often as you can. Uh, but it will sit here, just living down in the bottom here and uh, running in the background so you can do other things on the computer as well. Now this little mini PC only has eight gigabytes of RAM on board, but this one is quite easy to upgrade. You can just pop the top off there and swap out its RAM module for a larger one. So all in, I think a very good choice here if you are looking for a really inexpensive Plex server that might be able to do some other things on your network as well. They don't consume a lot of power. It's amazing what Intel has been able to pack into these processors. And this little one is one of the least expensive ones out there. But remember, if you're not doing hardware transcoding, you can still get by with a very old computer that's just serving the data over the network. Because if you're not doing the transcoding, all you're doing is just transferring the raw bit rate of the video files, which is not all that difficult for an older PC to do. So if you have no Plex server, this is a great way to start. If you have one that's not transcoding all that well, this one would be worth considering along with others that have Intel hardware on board. And hopefully this was helpful for looking at some creative ways that you can host a Plex server without a lot of money. That's gonna do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including gold level supporters, Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more.
And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv s.